Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. We're glad you're here to join us in person. And those who are joining us on the radio or online or on public access TV or on our website, we welcome you all this day. Uh, very few announcements other than what you'll find printed in your bulletin. Uh, Cafe Joy is a little limited today. It's just what I could put together pretty quick before I left as Jackie's ill this morning and Helga's recovering from surgery on her wrist. So it's one of those Sundays that come along from time to time and I realize just how much I need those two <laughs> and <laughs> week to week. So in any case, we begin our worship by coming together using a psalm. This is Psalm number eight and it will be on your screen. Maybe. There we go. If you follow, please, will you see the bow print? O Lord, our Lord. Your, your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, What are human beings that you are mindful of them? You have made them little less than God. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, would you join with me in our hymns of praise this morning? There are two of them. Uh, you see them there and they're in your bulletin. They'll also be on the screen. Stand if you're comfortable doing so.
Please be seated. Morning, Ava. It's been a while. <laughs> How have you been? Good. That's good. Today, you know what this is? You don't know what this is? <laughs> really? You don't use this in your bed? It's a blanket, yes. For sleep or naps, which I could really use right now. Our, puts kid, our kids put on at the 4-H an amazing dog show yesterday. I'm very tired, though, from it. <laughs> All right. So the importance of rest. It's important for us to get rest. When we can get enough rest, we're able to enjoy and appreciate everything so much more. And when we don't get enough rest, everything is a blur. But rest doesn't always mean sleeping. There's lots of different ways we can rest our bodies and minds without sleeping. Let's play a little game. I'm gonna show you a couple things that you have to try to guess what I'm doing that could be signs of resting. Reading yes, reading a book. That's right, sitting and reading. Um, and uh, believe me, I wasn't reading a dictionary. <laughs> I was reading a good romance novel. It feels good though to get relaxed and just let your mind wander. If you read like I do, and I got this from my mom, I can actually get into the book as a character. <laughs> I get images when I read, so I'm actually not in this world. <laughs> it's really nice. Now, let's try another one. What do you think? I was listening to the ocean waves because if I ever have a sound machine on, it's usually the ocean waves because they're very relaxing to me. All right, last, is there one more? No. So there are many ways you can rest other than actually sleeping. You can walk in the park. You can have a nice meal with family and just chat for a while. Don't rush it. We live in a wonderful world. God wants us to make sure we take time to really rest so that we can get the most out of what God has given us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've given us. Help us to remember to slow down and really take in your peace and wonderfulness that you've given us. I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
This morning's reading is from the um, book of John, chapter 6, verses 24 through 35, from the New Revised Standard Version. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got themselves into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Last week, we heard the story of the feeding of the 5,000. 
I'm sure that's an account that you've heard many times in your life. It's a regular reading from the lectionary, so every three years you would hear that specific reading, where Jesus gathered with his disciples in a place to speak to those who had gathered, and there were some 5,000, we're told. And when Jesus looked upon them, he realized that they were going to want to be fed. They were going to need to eat. And so he asked his disciples, how are we going to feed them? Where are we going to get the money to buy the needed bread? The disciples were perplexed, you may remember. They said it would take a year's wages to give them enough bread to even give a bit to each. And then Jesus did that marvelous miracle where he took from the little boy a few loaves of fish, of bread and a couple of fish, and from that was able to feed everyone everyone abundantly. (coughs) This follows, this reading today, this follows that marvelous event. Jesus and his disciples had returned across the lake and had gone to a different location. And the people who had experienced that wonderful uh, feast went looking for him and they found him. And when they found him, they came to him and gathered around him and he asked them a question that I kind of restate as being, what are you looking for? Why did they come? Why did they find him once again? And rather than have them answer, he answered it for them. He said, truly, I tell you, when Jesus uses the word truly or truly, truly, he means he's now gonna speak a word of knowledge to them to the people. And he says, you have come not so much looking for me because of what you have seen and experienced, but because of what you received in the way of bread. You've come hoping that once again, you can be filled and filled to the brim with food. Now, that's not an experience in the ancient world that was very common to people. Most of them barely got enough food for each day. Fresh food was difficult to come by, it depended on how good the fish, fishing was that day or you know how, what was available, if the harvest had been good, if there was enough food to be found. It could be very limited at times, and at times it was. But it was not common, unless you were quite wealthy, to know what it was like to always be full, to not hunger. So receiving that gift of being filled with the good bread and fish, I guess I can't blame them too much of looking for that source once again. (coughs) Excuse me. So Jesus said to them, it isn't that you are so interested in what I have to say to you as it is that you're looking for that experience once again. You wish to be fed. And he says, I tell you, that what I have to offer you is much more important than bread and fish. (coughs) I don't know why that's bothering me now. What I have to offer you is a bread that will fill you spiritually and will keep you fed as long as you stay near to me. You will receive it and it will be an abundance for your life. Hmm. Must be the air conditioning, huh? (coughs) And so what the the offered them (coughs) was his word, his teaching. His teaching, okay? And he called it the bread of heaven. Now you might think about what uh, Jesus means by the bread of heaven. A lot of people have wondered about that. And what it made the people present that day think of (coughs) was the manna their ancestors had received while they were wandering in the wilderness so many years back when they were with Moses. And so they remember that and they comment on that and they said, you know, um, our ancestors were fed manna from heaven. God provided, that was food, that filled their stomachs. Indeed, it was a sufficient food for them Uh, Each day they were in the wilderness and continued to feed them throughout their time. Is that what you mean? 
And he corrects it. He says, the manna that they received did not come from Moses, but from God. And the kind of bread I speak of is a heavenly bread, but it is me who represents that bread. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of heaven. And those who receive of that receive an abundance, an abundance that will carry them throughout their lives. This life we live and that life which is to follow. This is God's gift to us. So Jesus said, if you're going to go for anything, if anything is important in your life that you search out, that you really want to put an effort into, at least as much effort as you put into finding me, let it be that bread of heaven. Oh, thank you. Now I think about that when I think about what worship means. We've been talking a lot about worship the last several, well, weeks, many weeks now. What does worship mean? Why do we worship? Who is it we worship? And today I want to talk a little more about what is it we expect when we come to worship? What is it we're looking for? <coughs> if you came to worship today to hear me at my best, you're not going to hear that today. If you came for the music, you'll hear good and wonderful music. We'll sing our voice, our songs together. If you come looking for hope, I hope we can express some and we can receive some. If you come looking to be changed, oh wait, you didn't think about maybe coming here to be changed, did you? You see, most often what we're looking for is what we want, what we expect. We come to church looking for that which we want. Some want to be entertained and go to churches that offer, well, entertainment. Some want to come and share their walk of life with others whom they've grown up with or know or become friends with. That's important, that's relationships. <coughs> Some come out of obligation and habit. Some can just come looking to go to church. That's what we want. But is that what we need? Jesus challenges us to ask the question of ourselves, I believe, that he's asking of these people. <coughs> what is it are you looking for? Are you looking to have your wants fulfilled? Or are you coming looking for what you truly need, which is that bread of heaven? That is Jesus himself. That's something you must find for yourself. We can come together, we can seek it out together, we can hear scriptures, we can tell the stories of the scripture, we can sing our songs, we can do all of that together. But in fact, as it turns out, to receive that bread of heaven, just as you must receive the bread of communion, the wine of communion, you must receive it for yourself. What are you looking for this day? What are you looking for every day? I hope you're looking for what you truly need because what you truly need can only come from Christ. And the wonderful thing is, just as those who gathered on that field so long ago discovered, Jesus not only has enough for you and for me, but for all. And not just enough, but an abundance. So I hope that when you do go to church on Sunday, as you're coming through the door, ask yourself, what is it are you looking for this day? What is it are you hoping for, perhaps, is another way we could say it for this day. And I hope that you are fed spiritually in some form or matter that we offer in our church service. But more importantly, I hope you receive what only Jesus can give, and that is himself. He indeed, my friends, is the bread of heaven, and he's enough. Indeed, he's more than enough. He's in abundance. And he will be with you as he has promised for all your lives regardless where they may take you. And for that time in which we pass from this life to the next, he has promised to be there too.
to receive us and to then go forth with us throughout whatever lays beyond in all things. He is surely in abundance. Amen. Sing the song together now. You are mine. Sorry, I missed that up the slides. I lost my place. Uh, today we come together with our lives as they are. Uh, we don't know what our lives are going to be until we get up in the morning, and then we can't even be sure. Got to wait for the day to start. Uh, a couple days ago, I got sick. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen, uh, and it's kind of hung on. I'm, I'm feeling much better today, but then this morning I get up, my wife's sick. I, I've been married to her now for um, 44 years, and we've been in the church together for 34, going on five years, and I don't remember a single Sunday that she was homesick <laughs> till this morning. So her not being able to come is an unusual thing, but she caught my cold, so pray for me because she's not really happy with me this morning, uh, and pray for her that she'll feel better. Helga, who uh, you know helps out all the time on Sundays and is our communion steward, uh, had surgery on her wrist a few days ago, so she's home recuperating. 
Now, the good news, I haven't touched any of this except to carry it out here in the... And back there, when I cut the, the, the rolls, I wore gloves, so you're fine. I, I care if, I don't think I'm really catchy anymore, but who knows. But I want to be careful. We live in a time uh, where much happens so often in our lives. Things can be so active, and things can be so big uh, in the world going around us that we think whatever is going in our life is trivial in comparison. I mean, I have a cold or I'm getting over a cold. Okay, that's a problem for me, but it's kind of small in comparison to what's happening over in Israel and Gaza. Those are big things. Or what's happening in England with the various riots that have been taking place the last few days. Or what's going on in our own nation on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are major things. Those things change people's lives and cost people's lives. Those are big things. And we must be in prayer for them. But do not negate the things of your life because of that. God loves each of us, our very being right down to the marrow, right down to the very fibers of our body. God knows us and loves us and wants the best for us. So we need to reach out for that. And we need to be remember that as we pray for these major things going on in life, and there's so many, that we don't forget to pray for ourselves, and for our loved ones, for our neighbors, our community. This is our world that we live in too. It's the very world God gave us. In your bulletin, there are things that have been listed to be in prayer for, people that have indicated to us the need for prayer. And of course, we welcome that. If you have those to you know, either fill out the card back there and drop it in the box, uh, the basket rather, or give them to the usher, to me, somehow, if you'd like them brought before us on this day. Uh, but otherwise, <coughs> you can call the office or send email or text, however, uh, and always indicate to us if this is something you want shared with all or just kept within my knowledge or just a few others that that can be done as well. This past Tuesday, we honored Margie Krieger's life here in the church. Flowers are from that. And we remembered that very special lady who used to sit right out over there. You may remember her. Uh, it's been some years that she's been able to be with us in worship service, but she was quite faithful for a long time as she was able. And she passed away back in March, and, and so we, we remembered her on Tuesday. And we heard her brother Rod talk about her and their childhood together, and it, it really brought it together for me, this person. Uh, you know, we're not just the moment we're living right now. We are the people of who we have been. Uh, we have a life that goes back to the day we were born and came home and the experiences of that growing up. Uh, and, and living together with our families, that all shapes us. We leave our families eventually, usually, although sometimes today they come on back, so I'm told it's happened to me once. But we, we leave our families, we go on, we, we get fine people to fall in love with perhaps, get married, have our own children, we go on in our lives. Each and every aspect of that life shapes us, imprints on us. Uh, that experience that helps us be who we are today. She was a wonderful lady. She had a tremendous story to tell about resilience, the ability to deal with uh, what for many of us would have been an absolute disaster, having such low vision to not be able to see, to legally be blind. How do you make a living doing that? Well, people do, you know, they, and, and some do quite well, and she's an example of one who did very well. She was able to work 30 years at her job doing it. And how did she do it? Because she was resilient. She was a resilient person. And so we remembered her. And, and I hope you will hold that memory of her in your mind. Uh, very much the ability to do what needed to be done and did what she could. And that's a great example for us, you know, when we think we can't do it, when we're really having a bad day or we got a cold or whatever's happening that we can overcome because we must be resilient and it's God's gift to us to be resilient. So remember those who you think of at this time as I pray, hold on to them. If it's your own life that is in need or you're having a celebration today, that's wonderful. Let that come to your heart and mind at this time.
merciful and loving God, there are days in our lives where we feel really kind of sorry for ourselves. We get up in the morning, perhaps the day doesn't start the way we want. Perhaps things go along fine and then go bad again. And, but you come to us in such times and you tell us to be alert to something to be alert to what you are looking for this day. Are you looking to feel sorry for yourself? Or are you looking to accomplish what I have for you to do this day? You give us the opportunity, God, to do marvelous things in your name. We might think them as being mundane and unimportant, but it isn't what we think, it's what you do with what we do. You can take our small acts of care and love and support and then turn them into life altering things for indeed you call us into relationship not to stay the same but to be changed to be given growth in the spirit and relationship with you to grow in our spirits we'll grow physically whether we want to or not and we'll continue to grow in some fashion throughout our lives until such a time as our bodies say enough. But in our spirit, we can stagger. For you have called us to be active in relationship with you. To receive that which we need, that spiritual life that comes through the bread of heaven, your son, our Lord Jesus. But to stay with him to stay in that spirit so that we can continually to be fed with not necessarily maybe what we think we want but most assuredly with that which we need to live lives that are full and complete and wholesome and growing so we thank you god for that and we ask your blessing upon those who we think of at this time and upon our own lives as well this we ask in jesus most holy name amen Now, I said last week we were going to start passing the plate today, but we're not going to. <laughs> Upon reflection, um, it was, the, the, we'll get to that, let me get to that in a second. Uh, we decided what we're going to do is on once a month, so next Sunday we'll pass the plate because that's Mission Sunday. So that's what we want to give you the opportunity. We'll continue to have the offering box in the back as we always have, uh, well, I have for years now. But we will pass the plate next week because we want you to have the opportunity to share in the mission of the month. That may not be as easy to do, uh, utilizing the box. You have to mark it, what you want it for. So we thought this might be a more convenient way to do that. You can also use it for your offering if you prefer or wish. But anyway, so we'll just be doing that once a month on Mission Sunday, which is next month. All right, I'm going to offer a prayer for the offering given the church, if you would join with me in prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for the care given to this church. It's true, we have financial needs. Sometimes we, we think only of that as being what we need, but that's not true. We need the, the prayers and the hopes and the sharing of all the people who come through these doors. For it is not the building that is the church, it merely houses the church. We, your people, are the church. And we need each other. We need each other to make it through this life in so many ways. We might think we are an island unto ourselves, but it doesn't take long in life to realize the folly of that. We need each other. We need each other to grow together as disciples, for you have called us to be the community of disciples, seeking out your guidance, following you as a shepherd. A shepherd leads sheep, and sheep are a community of themselves. Together they follow the Good Shepherd. So may we too, O oh Lord, continue to follow the Good Shepherd. So we thank you for the gifts received in this church. We thank you for the gifts of the people. And we pray that you take those gifts and do with them such as you will, that we might play a role in that mission given to all Christians, all Christians to go into the world and to speak of Christ, to live a life that speaks of Christ, to call others into a life with Christ so that they might learn and receive all that he has given us. 
This we pray and give our thanks for in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And today, of course, is Communion Sunday. If you would join in singing song uh, 2268, I will prepare the Lord's table. I invite you to turn to page 13 in your hymnal, if you would please, for the great thanksgiving. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to Almighty God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, sovereign of the ages, whose strong and loving arms embrace the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. You created all things and called them good. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your eternal word, who became flesh and came to dwell among us. In Jesus Christ, whom your spirit anointed to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people, who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Jesus ascended with the promise to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at Christ's heavenly banquet. Through your eternal word, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. And now with the comments of the children of God, let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father. I invite our ushers to come forward, if they would please, to receive the, uh, the elements to bring out to you. I'm just going to have you take it. I'm just going to snatch one on the side. If you would just take a, take a plate. The further I stay away, the better. Thank you. We ask that as you receive the element, you hold it until we can all receive together. I'll signal when that time comes. body of Christ given for you.
blood of Christ given for you. As she plays, please keep playing, Anne Ellen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In Jesus' name. Now, dear friends, may God bless you. May God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you. May the God who sent Jesus Christ into this world so that God might be known by us bless you with the knowledge of who God truly is. In Jesus, we see the Father. In Jesus, we see the Holy Spirit as well as the Son. In Jesus dwelled all that God is. And through Jesus, God gave all that God could so that we might know and receive life. Receive that life. Receive that life through the bread of heaven. Receive that life through what Jesus Christ can only give. And know true life, true living, in this life and in that which is to come. Amen. Our closing hymn is may God's blessings. If you stand and join me in singing this, we'll conclude. Thank you. May we go in peace.